To get to the create shootout screen, the first thing you must do is go up to the menu, go to shootouts, scroll down and go to create shootouts. That will take you to this screen right here. Now, when you come into this screen, these boxes will be empty. The first thing that you must do is select the group that you want to be associated with this specific shootout. Next, you're going to come in and select the event that you previously created. So when I select that event, what it will do is automatically fill in the shootout name, the date, the start time, and the end time for me. Now, if you do not have an event created, it's not a problem. All you'll do is come down here, ignore the event drop down, and actually type in the shootout name that you desire and select the date, the start time, and the end time by clicking in these fields and selecting what time you would like. The next option that we have down here is number of rounds in this shootout. So we have three different options of uh, play in this, uh, in this case. So the first option that we have is two rounds, move two players up and down. What this means is, is when you have four players on the court, after the three games are played, the highest percentage or the person with the most points scored will move up a court. The player with the least amount of points scored and the lowest percentage will move down a court, and then you'll play another round of three games. What this does is give the players a little bit variety of who they get to play with on that day of the shootout. Our second option here is two rounds, same players each round. Uh, what this means is, is after the first three games are completed, regardless of who has the highest or the lowest percentage, the players on that court will stay on that court for the second round of three games. And one round only just means that the players will only play one round of three games and then they'll be done for that day. Now, if, you are have, if you're going to have two rounds uh, during your shootout, I recommend if you're having four and five player courts that you allow two and a half hours of play. If you're having just four player courts, um, then you can actually get a shootout done with two rounds done in uh, two hours or less. The next set of preferences we have over here is number of players per court preference. Uh, this will allow me to select um, how many four player courts or five player courts I want. Um, the first option we have here is four players only per court, no five player courts. Next is four players per court first, then fives if needed. And then these are just the exact opposite. Five player courts only, no four, uh, no four player courts, or five players per court first, then fours if needed. So what a five player court is for you people out there that uh, have never ran a five player court, um, you just have four players playing and then one person sitting out each game. So each, each individual game, uh, you will have a different player sitting out with a buy, um, and then you'll just rotate players in and out accordingly. Now, what we'd like to do, uh, if, we, if we select four players per court first and fives if needed, or five players per court and then fours if needed, what we'd like to do here is actually play the four player courts to 15 and the five player courts to 11. That way, since the five player courts are playing one extra game, they will get done around the same time. Uh, and uh, uh, also what you see here is we like to select win by one. Um, that way there'll be no overtimes and you can get your games finished in the uh, time that you have designated for that day. Next, we have additional court information. Uh, interval between time slots. This basically is just giving you the option to select of how long your shootout is gonna last. So if I'm gonna have multiple time slots that day, uh, a 9 and 11 time slot, then I would do a two-hour interval in between. If I'm doing a 9 uh, o'clock time slot and 11.30 time slot, I do a two and a half hours. So you get to decide how long you want your shootout to last. Number of courts available. Um, as you can see, we, ha we have a long list of numbers here. You can pick how many courts that you have. Um, in this case, I'm just going to press 7. And starting with court number. Uh, what this does right here is I can start with any court number I want. So if I start with three, it will place the best players on court three for me now. And then the second uh, group of best, uh, second group of players will play on court four and then five, six, seven, one, two. So that's how you actually get to shuffle your players around each week. So then the best players are not always playing on court number one. Now you can see down here, once I select a number of courts available seven, it automatically placed the players on the courts for me. So it says I have 
uh, 28 players that signed up for my event. And what it does is now it says the best case scenario for me in my shootout would be seven four player chords and zero five player chords since 28 is divisible by four. As you can see down here, here are all your players that said yes, they want to be a part of this event when they have a check mark next to their name. So they don't have to email you or call you and tell you that they're going to be there or not going to be there that day. Um, after they register on the event side of things, the event will import over those members and will actually put a check mark next to their name for you so you don't have to manually do it. Now, one of the biggest issues that clubs run into when they're running ladders or shootouts is dealing with substitutes and having people not show up or notify the administrator that they are not going to be there for that morning or that evening shootout. So what we've done is we've eliminated that issue altogether. Um, and how we do that is let's just pretend that Angela over here just does not show up and she does not notify me that she's not going to be there either. So what I can do is before the shootout begins that day, I can come over here, I can uncheck her name, and now what it does is it reshuffles all the people for me. It says number of players 27, and now with 27 players, the best case scenario for me is three four-player courts and three five-player courts. So as you can see, it took Angela out of the list and it reshuffled the players accordingly. And now it's it gives me a different scenario for how many courts I should have for that shootout. So no longer do you, does your club need substitutes for your ladder or shootout. You can regenerate the shootout, take people out, add people in right on the fly under 30 seconds uh, before the shootout begins if you have a computer or a tablet at the courts. Now before we create the shootout, I always like to come in here and go to court layout preview. What this does right here is I'm actually able to see where the players are going to be placed on the courts before I create the shootout itself. So as you can see here are my four player courts and then down here, here are my five player courts. Now if I need to move somebody around or I need to manipulate the shootout in some way, I can do so very easily. Uh, let's just say, for instance, that I believe that Bob Littlejohn should be on court one above Brian Wold, and Brian Wold should be down on court two. So what I can do is come over here, click on Bob Littlejohn's name, click on the arrow, hold down my mouse, and drag and drop Bob Littlejohn wherever I wish. Now Bob Littlejohn will be on court one. I also have another way of doing this. If I want to go down here and let's say I want to move Bill Bell up to court one as well, I can come in here and use what we call the average override. So right now, Bill Bell has a 77.58%. If I want him to move up to court one, he has to have at least a 78.71. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 78.72 and press the tab key. So what that does now is that is going to override Bill Bell's real percentage, and that's actually going to move him up. Now, that just moved him up to court, uh, to the top of court two, because Brian Wold actually has a 78.79. So let me go back in here and type in 78.7, let's say 0 0.80, press the tab key. And now you can see that Bill Bell has moved up above Brian Wold and will be there on court one for the shootout. Now, that average override will stay in there and will override Bill Bell's real percentage until the administrator goes back in and deletes it out. All I have to do is press the tab key now. It deletes out the average, and now it moves Bill Bell back down to where his real average should place him. Okay. Now, on this screen right here, you can see how many shootouts they've played in. You can see their overall average. You can see their name and their gender, of course. And you can also see their rating and their grouping. So what's nice about this is if you ever need to change a grouping or a rating here, you can do so by just clicking on the arrows and it brings up a, a drop-down box and you can select whichever rating that you want or you can come over here and select group and you can select whatever group you want to put them in. It's very simple that way. So now once I think everything is in order and this is the way I want my shootout to look, I first want to go over here and save the setup. Okay, so I'm going to save the setup and press OK. And so what that does now, guys, is that saves all my preferences that I just selected through this whole process. 
So if I need to go back into the shootout and take somebody out or move some stuff around, I can do so by just going to previous and then coming up here and selecting my previous shootout that I just saved and it will reload all my settings. Uh, that makes it very nice for you guys to go in and like I said, regenerate the shootout, take people out, put people in, or manipulate the shootout however you wish before it actually begins. Uh, once I save the setup, I come over here and create the shootout. And what this is going to do now, guys, is this is going to place the players on the courts, first of all, according to their skill grouping, A through E, and then the percentage within that grouping. So as you can see, we have all B players here. And now we have a C player down here in court two, the top, top C player playing with the bottom B players. And now here are, here are our five player courts. The X uh, represents a buy for each game for that person. And you can see we have E's, D's, C's, and B's all the way through all the courts here that I selected. Now, what the skill grouping uh, basically means is is a 4-5 and a 5-0 are the A group, the 4-0 are the B group, 3-5 are the C group, 3-0 are the D group, and 2-5 skill rating and below are the E group. The reason why we group players is because that way we can give them a glass ceiling. So if John Doe comes into my club and we don't, and we don't know uh, how good of a player he is, but he tells us that he's a 3-0. So we're going to place him in the D group. Well, if John Doe just kills everybody that day and gets 100% and does not lose a game, what will happen then is he will only be able to go to the top of his letter group until the administrator goes in and manually moves them up or down a group. So you will not be able, you will not be able to have a player that gets 100% and have them jump from the D group to the A group. We give them a glass ceiling, or for that matter, even a glass floor. So if somebody's been doing really bad, they're not going to drop down all the way to the bottom court and play with the lower skilled players and beat everybody. Uh, they will only go to the bottom of their group until you move them down. So that's uh, the correlation between a skill rating and the A through E skill grouping that we have here. Now to type in the scores, it's very simple. All I need to do is come over here and it says I'm going to game to 15 win by one. I just type in 15 and I press the tab key. Okay, type in 15, press the tab key. And as you can see, as I'm typing in these scores, that on the right hand side, these scores are automatically being updated for me. And not only are my points, points being calculated, but my points are automatically being turned into a percentage. How we get that percentage is we take the points that we received in each game divided by the most possible points that you can receive, which in this case would be 45, and then that gives that person their percentage. So basically, guys, it's just like a handicap in golf. Okay, so now you guys can see how that works. Now, if I ever if I want to send out the court assignments the night before the shootout, it's very simple. I just go up here to email schedule. A text box appears. I can type in any text text that I want. And I can do one of two things. I can email all the users in the shootout. So all the users within this shootout will receive their court assignments, what time they're playing at, what court they're playing on, and who they're playing with. Or I can say email alternate only. Come in here, type in my email. And now when I press send, it will only go to my email. So then I can see the court assignments for myself since I am the administrator. Otherwise, what you can do is you can come in here and click print shootout. And what that will do is that will print three courts per page for you. So you can have the, uh, the printed, courts, uh, printed courts actually with you at all times. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and type in more scores so I can show you how the up-down movement works. So the scores are still being calculated here. And as I go down to my five player courts, you can see right here, if I it, this right here is a game to 11. Let's just say my mind is uh, that we're still playing to 15. So if I type in 15 and press the tab key, it says value entered exceeds the maximum, which is 11. So it won't let me do that, obviously. 
So what I'll do is I'll type in 11, 11, 7, 7. And when I press the tab key here, it jumps over Brian O'Hare. Uh, the reason why it does that is because the X represents a buy for that player. So that field, um, it's not possible to edit or place any information in that field for that game for Brian O'Hare. Now, I want to show you guys the up and down movement now with the players. So after the first round of games are completed here, all I need to do is press both. And now what this does, guys, is this moves the best, uh, uh, highest percentage up a court, the lowest percentage down a court, and now I can play in my second round of games with more variety. So as you can see here, the worst percentage on court number one for round one was a 62% accuracy and heart. Now, when I go down here to round two, you can see the accuracy and heart is nowhere to be found. That is because he is going to now move down on the second round to court two. And on court two for the first round, Bob Littlejohn got 100%. So now you can see for round two, Bob Littlejohn has been moved up to the fourth spot on court number one. So that is how the up and down movement works uh, on uh, with this format right here. If you're only doing one round only, you would only see the one right here. You would not see the two or both. And if you go over here and click two, it will only show you the second round of games. Okay. So you're able to uh, see the first round only, the second round only, or what I always like to do is I like to look at both at the same time. Um, so I can see the, the up down movement and I can see everybody's percentages. Now, after all the games are completed, you don't need to go in and press save or press finish or done or anything like that. These scores are automatically being updated and saved in real time. So as soon as I type in a score, that score is being saved in our system and updating that person's uh, uh, handicap. So what I need to do as the administrator once I'm done is go up here to shootouts. Go to Handicaps and Results. And within the Handicaps and Results screen, I can see every single shootout that my players have played in. I can see their name, their gender, their average, their number of shootouts they've played in, their rating, and their grouping. Now, we can hide their rating or grouping by clicking right here and saying Not Visible or Visible. And if I would like to look at all the shootouts that this player's played in, I can come down here click on their percentage and now here are all the shootouts that this person's played and we actually have information on this player all the way back to 2010 so the amount of data that you guys can compile over time is pretty great now if I actually want to be able to look at the courts for that date all I need to do is come down here and let's say I want to look at January 6 2016 I, I got a pretty bad percentage here of a 53.41% so all I do is come down here, click on that name of the shootout. And what this will do now is this will take me back into the courts. I can see every single game that I played. I can see who I played against and what score I received for that week's shootout. So it's really nice for your players to be able to come back in here, see the results, and be able to track their progress on a weekly basis. And for that matter, being able to track their progress on a on a yearly basis so they can see uh, you know last year what their percentage was at and how they've grown as a player since then and that is one of the main reasons uh, why we created the handicap screen so they can not only see how they compare against um, the other players within their group but also so they can track their own progress and see how they've um, developed as a player over time so I'm going to go back to my handicaps and results screen and I want to show you one last thing on here before I go. And that is uh, each person's name here is highlighted in blue. So what I can do is I can go down here and I can click on the person's name. And what that will do now is that will take me to the person's profile. And I can see all the activity that they've had on their profile since they've registered with Track it Hub. I can also come down here and select About Me. And now I can see all the information about Bill Halter. That now concludes the tutorial on how to create a shootout. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you have any questions, please contact Travis Cruz at traviscruz at trackandhub.com. See you on the courts.